Hello friends, I'm Abby and today I will be starting a brand new reading vlog. And this vlog doesn't really have a whole lot of theme. <laughs> the theme is a word because it is the buzzword a thon word of the month, which is house or home. So I have three books that I'm planning on reading for this prompt for buzzword a thon. The first book is A House at the Bottom of a Lake by Josh Mallerman. And I will start by talking with, about this one because I've already started it. So A House at the Bottom of the Lake is kind of a horror novella about these two 17 year olds who go on their first date in this canoe and they find a house under the water of this lake and they decide to explore it. It's considered horror and is considered to be a super claustrophobic book but also with a hint of romance, like a romantic storyline through it. So I'm interested, especially because it is under 200 pages. It's only 190 pages. So I'm interested to see where it goes. Then we have the second book that I'm planning on reading, which is going to be House of Earth and Blood, <laughs> maybe. Um, it's the first book in the Crescent City series by Sarah J. Mass. I've never read a Sarah J. Mass book. I'm deciding to start with this one only because it's the introduction to a new series that she's writing and it's the first adult fantasy book. So I'm planning on diving into that one. I don't really know much about the plot of the first Crescent City book, only that it is about a girl named Bryce who I think encounters demons and is trying to figure out what happened to a family member maybe? Don't come for me if that's not right. I just didn't want to know a whole lot before picking the book up. But it is a thick fantasy book. I've heard that it has a great character at its forefront, some really awesome scenes, and that it has pretty much every mythical creature you could think of, like werewolves, vampires, all of that goodness. So I'm very excited to pick that up. And then the third book with House or Home that I'm planning on reading is House of Hollow. In this, again, I don't know a whole lot, but it is a young adult book that is about these sisters who I think have to like, two of them disappear and one of them has to try to go find the other ones. But this cover is stunning. It's kind of a like thriller, horror, um, young adult contemporary story. It's described as having a fantastical writing style, almost like magical realism, and that it reads like a fairy tale. So it sounded like it was right up my alley. And I have seen Molly here on booktube. They love this book, did not stop raving about it. And then somebody else that I follow really, really loved it. A couple other people did. And so when I saw that it was available for my library, I put the hold in. So hopefully the hold comes through sometime very soon because I'm planning on reading it in this vlog in the month of what month are we in May oh wow what a time and with that being said I will tell you about a house at the bottom of the lake I am about halfway through so like I said it's 190 pages and I hit 100 pages exactly today this book I love Josh Mallerman's writing I don't even know if I would call it a book though, like more like a novella. Josh Mallerman's writing is very succinct, very short sentences, very short paragraphs. Like the paragraphs are usually one to two sentences and that really keeps the pace of the book moving. The chapters are short and I'm really just flying through this. I also think that Josh Mallerman has a really great and interesting way of writing characters in a short amount of time that you feel real connected to. So the two main characters, Amelia and James, I've only been with them, I mean, I guess it's been 100 pages, but within the first like 30 pages, I felt a connection to them. I felt like they were real people that I had met and I really wanted to know what was gonna happen to them. Like I want to know whether they're okay in the end or not. And since this is a horror novella, I don't really know what's gonna happen because right now it, is reading very hopeful and I know this book is very controversial like some people say this should not be categorized as a horror novel some people say oh my gosh it gave me like such claustrophobic and terrifying feelings so I don't know what my reaction is going to be yet for the time being there has only been one instance in this book that I've been like oh <laughs> like it shocked me a little bit 
and I got a little bit creeped out. For the most part, it has been just kind of a sweet, blossoming romance story about these two 17 year olds who have never been in love and they kind of meet and decide to go on this goofy first date and it turns into a really special bond between them and I'm loving it. I love their characters. I love the writing. I'm nervous about the turn it's going to take because the house at the bottom of the lake is still very mysterious and is almost like its own character. But I kind of have a fear that none of this is going to be explained. And that's maybe why the ratings are so low is because it's going to be a very ambiguous ending. And although I don't mind some ambiguous endings, sometimes you just want a good wrapped up like explanation, you know? You don't always get that in horror books, but that's kind of what I want. Oh, well, I guess we'll see. I absolutely loved Bird Box by Josh Mylerman, so I'm hoping that I love this one as well. Like I said, this was my first one. I'm hoping to have it done by tomorrow so I can update you again and get straight into reading the next book in this vlog. But for the time being, I have to go unpack some of these boxes and hopefully paint a couple rooms. That Our whole house needs painted and I'm procrastinating okay I have to go do something I have to hi I have chosen another equally messy equally inconvenient location to film today but that is the glory of moving is you just find the least inconvenient spots to film your updates and I do have an update for you because I have finished a house at the bottom of the lake by Josh Mallerman. And I am very conflicted because part of me absolutely loves this and part of me is very confused. And I often feel this when I read books that are supposed to be very smart, that some people get and some people don't get. This is often how I feel. I often feel very, um, I think I get it. And then I'm like, oh, I enjoy it. But then part of me is like, but do I get it? And then I can't fully enjoy it because I need to know exactly what the author meant. And trust me, I already Googled it and the ending of this book is not explained anywhere. So let me, just let me try to sum up my thoughts. This book was fast paced. The writing was great. I loved a lot of the writing choices made. Like things, the way Josh Mallerman phrased things was just really, beautifully written and I thought that it made it very creepy and atmospheric. It felt very claustrophobic and I also thought that the play on words in many different situations was really interesting. I also loved the characters of Amelia and James. I think that their characters are going to stick with me because they are just so quintessential images of 17 year olds in love. This book, the second half of the book, was definitely more of the horror aspect. It took a turn and got a little bit dark, it got a little bit creepier, and as it took that turn, they physically were more in dark and more creeped out as characters. So I think that the way the book follows that pattern was really, really nicely done. And I think that after sitting with the ending of this book, for, I finished it on my lunch break. And so sitting with it for the rest of the day, basically the rest of my work day, I definitely feel like I get it. <laughs> like I get the point and the perspective of the author when writing this book. And I really like it, but because it was so short and because I don't know that that was the intention of the author, I don't know what to rate it. I never know what to rate books that are this short because it's almost like, it's not a normal book. You know, like it's, it doesn't have the world building and all that kind of stuff, but it kind of does in like a shorter, more compact way. So I'm not really sure what I would rate it, but I would say definitely in the four star range. Like I was, I thought it was really enjoyable. If you haven't read this book or this novella and you are planning on reading it, I'm going to tell you what I think the book is about and what I think the explanation of the ending is. If you don't want to know my thoughts before reading it, I will put a little spoiler thing right here so that you can kind of skip past it. I think that this novella really encapsulates the idea of that obsessive teenage love, that teenage romance that just is on the verge of obsession 
And I think if you have been in a relationship like this, or you have been a teenager in love, you know that experience where you're, you always want to be around them. You feel that constant drawing back to them. You feel like you can't survive without them. And then even when you're not with them, you feel that aspect of them, the themness of your relationship kind of pushing in on you and taking over everything. You, in fact, you start to become like a different person. That obsessive teenage love, first of all, is just directly kind of explored in the relationship between James and Amelia because they are so, they fall in love so quickly and they fall in love in this like passionate exploration adventurous way i think that the house at the bottom of the lake is this kind of dark and scary abyss of like exploring that deep obsessive relationship the house is representing that relationship it's calling them back they can't escape it when they try to leave the house it's like it follows them the water shows up in their room and when that happens in the book they call each other and they meet back up and they decide to go back to the house. So I think that that is very clear. Now the ending, at the very end, they are exploring the house and they basically say hello to the house and the house disappears. And as soon as they make themselves known in the house, they introduce themselves to the house, it goes away. And I think to me, this was the magic of that obsessive relationship. You know, when that honeymoon period starts to end and you really have to start like facing the hard questions and facing the hard things, the hows and the whys, if you will, <laughs> the house disappears. The fun, dark, adventurous, obsessive thing that was keeping your relationship alive disappears and you now have to decide whether you're gonna sink or swim. And then, at the very end, they find the physical manifestation of this house. And this is where I get a little bit confused because everything up to that point, I feel is so thoroughly explained. And then we have this last bit where they decide to call it quits. And then all of a sudden they are walking down the street and they see this house that is the house they saw underwater, but on land. And I don't really know what to make of that. Part of me thinks that it could be an exploration of them like circling back finding new ways to like create the obsession or i think it could be kind of this evolved relationship they've grown up a little bit and decided not to um pursue this obsessive path and as soon as they let go of that like deep dark obsession they were able to find something that could be like a real legitimate home for them so i don't really know but those are my thoughts about it. So I'm gonna take the spoilers off. Ultimately, I recommend you read this. It was short, it was fast paced, and I thought that it gave me a lot that will stick with me. So I highly recommend it. If you like horror-ish, romance-ish, kind of confusing novellas that are fast paced and quick to read, I recommend it. I am not going to be reading for a little bit. Um, I probably won't check in with you for a few more days only because we have to paint this whole house and I didn't realize how much work that was gonna be. And the next book I'm reading is House of Earth and Blood by Sarah J Mass. It is 700 pages long. I probably won't start that until this weekend and it is currently Wednesday. So I'm going to go to the store, get some paint, get our paint supplies ready so that I can start painting this house tonight. And then hopefully I'll have some time to read this weekend and be able to update you. So I will see you the next time I have something to say.
Okay, so I went to the library to drop off some books that I have finished recently, and I had five books that were available for me to check out, so I'm going to share them with you. The first one is the next book that I'm reading in this vlog, which is House of Hollow by Crystal Sutherland. Um, I'm very excited about this, so I wanted to make sure that I had it on hold from the library so that I could read it as soon as I'm done with Crescent City. I picked up Nevermore, The Trials of Morgan Crow, which is a middle grade, a start of a middle grade series where the first three books have come out. I really want to catch up on the series before the next book comes out. So I figured if I start it, like try to get one done each season, then I will be caught up because I think there's three books that are out in this so far. Um, I also got Witches Steeped in Gold, which is a new release. This is a thick book. It's like over 500 pages. It's big. It's a big one. I also got Imari and the Night Brothers, which is another middle grade fantasy, and I believe the start of a middle grade series. It's new this year, or it came out in 2020. Very recently it came out, but I'm very excited to pick this up. And then last but not least, I picked up Take a Hint, Danny Brown, which is the next book in the Brown Sisters trilogy. So I picked up these books. I'm headed home and then I plan on sitting down and reading for a little while before Brent and I go on a date night. I also wanted to update you on some of my house, my house details. The first detail being that painting has really just taken over my life recently. I'm so sick of painting. We ended up having to paint all of the doors in our house, like every door, including the closet doors. They just were so shabbily painted that I needed to touch them up. So I ended up having to do that. And then basically every room needed a fresh coat of paint because the people who moved out, the previous owners, they had not repainted in a very long time. And the things that they did attempt to repaint were just not done super well. So we are repainting basically every room, but I'm so overwhelmed with the amount of painting. I have blisters, my hands hurt. I am just really overwhelmed with it all right now. So today I'm not gonna paint anything. I'm gonna sit down, I'm gonna read. Brett and I are gonna have a nice little date night and just focus on enjoying having a house because so far we haven't really been able to enjoy it. We've just been working since day one. So we're gonna enjoy it tonight and I'll check in with you once I have read more of house of earth and blood i'm never i never think i'm right and i'm always right <laughs> okay i am ready to update you about crescent city because i decided what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna split this into like four updates because this book is almost exactly 800 pages long. So I'm going to update you like every 200 pages. And now that I'm 200 pages in, I feel like I can tell you what this book is about, which I may or may not have mentioned that this book is my first introduction to Sarah J. Mass. So I have never read her Throne of Glass or Court of Thrones, Throne and Roses series, which are both young adults. This is adult. There's a lot of swearing. There's a lot of sexually explicit discussions, nothing explicit so far. But also from what I hear, A Court of Thorns and Roses is considered new adult and is basically just adult because it's super steamy and explicit. So take, take that as you will. But this book, I'm 200 pages in and this book is about Bryce Quinlan, who is half fae, half human. So she has, fairy blood but is also human and it's in this world that has all of ma the magical creatures you can think of there are angels demons there are gods there are werewolves and shapeshifters there are vampires really just anything you can think of and bryce is best friends at the beginning of the story with danica who is a werewolf or like a wolf shifter so some crazy, crazy stuff happens. And ultimately Bryce is being used in this book, especially in the first 200 pages so far, she is being used as kind of this investigator of 
a murder mystery. We love it. There's magical stuff happening. There is a missing artifact because Bryce works at this like artifact business where they find an antiques and she is kind of the person who goes out and sells the antiques but also helps find them for her boss. So it's very, very interesting. The writing is super fast paced and very interesting. Like I feel connected to the characters. I feel like so much is happening and that 200 pages went by so quickly. Like I just feel like I just started the book and I'm already 200 pages in, but I'm absolutely loving it. And we've been introduced to two other POVs in this book. There is Hunt, who is an angel who is basically being used as a slave for the governor to find and kill basically anybody that he says he has to find and kill. A lot of tea, a lot of tea going on in this. But ultimately it's action packed, it's fast paced, it's gory, there is murder, there's mystery, there's romance steaming, I can feel it. And there's also just magical characters all over the place, just like a ton of magical characters that I absolutely love. So I'm truly enjoying this a ton. And all I want to do is keep reading because I really just want to know what happens. So I see good things happening in this book for me, especially because I read 200 pages and not once was I like, mm. it's like it started strong. It has continued at that level. I am so excited to see where it goes from here. A little plant update so you all can see how my fiddle leaf fig is doing. We had to do some trims. As you can see, there were a lot of like brown spots and really the only way we could find online to help the plant was to cut the brown spots off. And we also trimmed, it was a little top heavy, so we trimmed the top off of both sides. And so far in the last year or so, it's grown a ton. Basically everything on here right now was a new leaf that grew in the past year but it grew all of these little leaves in the past few months. And then since we moved into the house, it's grown new little leaves down here at the bottom. They're so tiny you can see. And you can see this new one is just blossoming. And maybe another little stalk was growing right there. And then we of course have my devil's ivy is really thriving. It's really, easy to take care of those. But then we also have my snake plant, which I almost got rid of because it was starting to look a little withered, a little old. And you can see like a little tired, but it grew this little tiny snake plant that's really thriving and getting bigger every day. So now we are trying to take better care of it um, so that we can help it keep growing. But that is my little plant update. They're happy. They haven't found their home yet because as you can see, it's still super messy in here. But as soon as we have a home for them, I'll get them all set up. Hello, let's do an update because I'm halfway through House of Earth and Blood, Crescent City number one, and I'm obsessed. I'm 400 pages in and honestly, if I could make this book last forever, I would. I'm so terrified of the next 400 pages because I don't want to stop reading this book and the next book in the series doesn't come out until like March of next year. How have people read this book and they're just like waiting for the next book to come out? I don't understand. And I'm only halfway, so I can't even imagine what the rest of the book is gonna bring me. So let's talk about things I'm loving about this book the mental health representation. Both characters in this have extreme PTSD and trauma going on in their lives and they experience so many like highs and lows that a lot of characters in fantasy and in books experience but they don't ever really dive deep into what it means to experience those lows and like kind of the things that people do to cope with those low moments to get out of them. And we have seen Bryce have multiple panic attacks where Hunt, because he has been through trauma as well, understands how to help her get out of them. 
it's so stinking cute like this supportive relationship of two people who have been through things that are extremely traumatic extremely traumatized and whose society for both of them has a very negative view like everyone views hunt as this demon god of death like they literally call him like the shadow of the night and all of these like dark things because he's known for the horrible things that he has to do because he's a slave and he's doing the bidding of the governor and then Bryce is known as this like stupid vapid party girl who all she cares about they call her mean mean names referring to the fact that she sleeps around this is what everyone thinks about her and she kind of really both of them are doing this thing where they put up a front like they are the people that society thinks they are and they're really not but they want people to think that way about them because they both have such negative views of themselves that it's they're basically trying to push everyone away so that no one gets too close but then they're forced it's like a forced proximity book because hunt is chosen as bryce's like bodyguard basically their partners on solving this murder mystery which i'll get to in a second and this forced proximity basically forces them to be together and they kind of complete each other like they both understand what the other person is doing and they are just making sure that they are seen like they see each other and it is so stinking cute and like literally nothing has happened the most that has happened in these 400 pages is a thigh touch a thigh touch but the best part about having a book that is this big 800 page book where fantasy is an important element and romance is an important element you're getting world building you're getting that slow romantic tension build and you're getting an interesting story because I'm fully invested in Hunt and Bryce's relationship even though nothing has happened yet and to be honest I'm assuming something happens because it's a romance but I don't know that it'll end happily because there's a lot of this isn't a romance novel which you know ends happily and there's a lot of hints that something crazy is gonna happen and that they might not have a happily ever after and I will riot I will riot but I love the world building it's so innovative and I love the combination of all of the different types of creatures kind of working together in this city but also there are so many like political lines being drawn and a lot of power hungry people who are really challenging each other and pushing those boundaries but on top of that this almost reads like an urban fantasy which means that it's set in the real world because this is like maybe the first fantasy i've read that is set in a completely fictional world where they have all of the technology that we have in current day. So they have cell phones, they have camera footage, they have, you know, government things that are listening to you. Just very fascinating and interesting elements to add into this fantasy world and to see who is controlling all of those things. Like who's the top dog? And especially with this murder mystery, we're getting to see basically like what a modern day murder mystery what the process would be to solve that but we're seeing it in a fantasy world which is so amazing and beautiful and i'm just obsessed and i have no idea i know some of the connections like i have a few theories for this murder mystery but we're already halfway through and like what i thought was gonna be the solving of it has like just come up and I'm like, there's no way there's 400 more pages of them trying to find this person. There's freaking demons that are killing people. It's gory. And there's a lot of discussion about how both for both Hunt and Bryce, these murders and this murder mystery is bringing up a lot of negative stuff for them. They're really dealing with it. But anyway, I love the writing. I think it's fast paced. It's keeping me hooked. I want to keep reading. I'm terrified this book will end because... I think I will be in a low, <laughs> low emotional point when this book ends. And I haven't felt that way about a book in a long time where I'm just really connected and I think about it all the time and I wish I lived in it. It's really good to have this feeling. Uh, house update. Let's give you a fun house update. Um, I haven't done much. <laughs> I have unpacked a lot of boxes today, which was really my goal. We took it a couple days off. So I'm back today with working on the house and with trying to get things done. 
So I've unpacked quite a few boxes that were just kind of sitting around. But we're getting to the point now where a lot of the things I'm unpacking are like decorations and the rooms aren't painted. So I can't decorate the rooms. I can't hang stuff on the walls. So I'm at the point now where I think this weekend we're going to have to paint. It's a Friday, by the way. I don't think I told you. But I think this weekend we're going to have to finally like buckle down and actually paint some rooms. We've been trying to avoid it because we did so much painting early on. But we're going to have to paint. So that's where we're at. Um, I'm tired. I don't want to do any more housework, but we have fun plans for this weekend and like other things we have to do, like go clean our old apartment. So I basically, if I want to get work done, I have to do it tonight. Like that was our plan was to work hard tonight. So I have to get back to it. It's been a day. my god <laughs> i have no words i am 75 percent of the way through this i just reached page 600 and the twists the twists i'm <sighs> the build up okay the absolute build up just to tear you down i'm so i'm obsessed with this book i'm far too invested i have to I'm torn between needing a break from reading it because I'm so emotionally invested and like I feel like crying. So I'm torn between taking a break from the book and just powering through and finishing it because I have to know what happens. It's so, the way this book tugs on your emotions and the way Sarah J Mass plays you like a fool, it's brilliant. It's brilliant. This book is so easy to read. I'm just flying through it, but I find myself rushing home after work to read it and waking up in the morning thinking about these characters and what today is going to bring and going to sleep thinking about what I read that day and what's going to happen. It just feels like there's this massive murder mystery plot happening and there's this romance plot happening and they're both so like nothing's really happening. They're not making a ton of major advances, but every single page is genius and every chapter ends with something that makes me want to keep reading and want to come back to it. There's a plot twist or a cliffhanger at the end of almost every chapter and ultimately I just am obsessed with Bryce and Hunt like their characters as well as all of the side characters there's Rune, Fury, um, Juniper, there is the Autumn King, there's the Viper Queen, there is Micah, there's just really like a ton of characters in this and all of them I'm like even if I don't like them, I'm interested in them. And I think that their characters have like a full story. Even like Bryce's parents are getting a full story. Like we are seeing their entire history. We are learning to love them. We're getting side of side characters stories. Like we are just fully being immersed in this world and in all of these characters' lives. I feel like I'm part of it. And that is why I love reading. And I think this book has really brought me back to my teenage years and what really started me in loving reading. So I'm obviously loving this book so far. I can't wait to read the last 200 pages because I need to know what happens with all of these characters. And I need to know that they're all okay because it hurts. <laughs> me but I think the mystery is very compelling I think the twists it's taking are very unexpected <laughs> and I'm just blown away I understand now why this book is so hyped I can't wait to finish it and see if the hype continues if it stays real because I need to know that is my update for today I will probably update you again when I have finished house of earth and blood by Sarah J Mass. Let's do it. All right, friends. I have 
finished the Crescent City House of Earth and Blood. I am giving it five stars. The hype is real, ladies and gentlemen. If you like fantasy, fantasy romance, I highly recommend you check this out. Let's talk about slow build romances because this is a solid 800 pages of a slow build romance. And that sounds, I'm sure to some of you, absolutely atrocious. But to me, the angst, the emotions I felt for these characters were so real. I cried multiple times in this book. I smiled. I just cheered for every single character in this book. And Sarah J. Mass, I think I'm going to check out the rest of her books, but from what I hear about her stories, I think that she's going to start to become a comfort read author for me because it does have kind of that comforting vibe to it. Like when you're reading it, it feels like coming home. It feels like reading something that you, things are super tense and every moment my, I couldn't breathe and my heart was racing, but I still felt like in the end, it will all come together and like, it will be okay. Not that I'm saying that that happened in this book, but that's how her writing feels. Like, I feel like she, even though she sets you up and like tears you apart, in the end, like I trust her as a writer. I trust where she's going. The twists that took in this, the way that the twists all tied together at the end, there were moments where things came back at the very end that I was like, oh shoot, I totally forgot that that happened at the beginning, which is the joy of a long book is you forget some of the like little bits and pieces. The way the mystery turned out, the way the romance played out, the way the relationships in this book were handled, both romantically, sibling, friendship, um, parental, literally every relationship in this book was explored and it was stunning. Five out of five stars. I cannot wait to read the second book. It comes out, I don't know, sometime next year. And I absolutely will be pre-ordering it because I need to know what's going to happen. And that brings me to the next book that I will be reading and the final book I'll be reading for this vlog. And that is House of Hollow by Crystal Sutherland. I have been hearing fantastic things about this. However, I have also seen some people get their hopes really high and putting way too much hope into this book being amazing and then they're disappointed. So I'm going in with like medium levels of expectations because it's a YA horror or thriller-esque with a little bit of fantasy. So that's not necessarily YA horror and thriller is not always my jam. So I'm already a little bit skeptical. I've heard good things so I'm excited to pick it up. And this book just sounds really fascinating and looks super gory and interesting. So this book is about Iris and her two older sisters who as children are kidnapped, I believe, or they disappear. And then when they come back, their appearance changes. So they come back with blonde hair and blue eyes, even though they left with brown hair and brown eyes. And so they kind of are just like from that point on a little bit off, a little bit weird. And then when Iris is 17, her sisters vanish or disappear and Iris makes it her duty to find her sisters. So I think that there is a like road trip element in this as well as this is described as being like a fairy tale. So I think it's going to have a lot of like cottage core vibe, like outdoorsiness going on and I don't know if you can tell but there's ants like on the cover and look like in here and those keep freaking me out because they're so realistic that I keep thinking ants are crawling on my book so I'm already like a little ooh, like a little creeped out by this book the cover alone is creepy but I'm just so excited to see what happens in this and it's fairly short it is under 300 pages so I'm going to listen to this audiobook while I cook dinner tonight and see how far I get. But I will update you when I have listened and read along to a little bit of House of Hollow. Hi, let's do an update. As you can probably tell, you're resting on my shelves because I'm about to set up my bookshelves and I'll be filming it for videos. So keep your eye out for that. 
but I wanted to update you that I am about a third of the way through House of Hollow. I am 106 pages in. And wow, is this taking turns I didn't expect. It is very weird, but beautifully written and very dark for a young adult. There's definitely, there's more gore and like more horror than I expected so far, but it also is simultaneously reading somewhat like a contemporary young adult story just because there's like mean girl drama at school. I don't know. It's very interesting. I do have like a corrections corner for all my my favorite murder friends out there, I have a corrections corner about this book because I just gave some details that I thought were correct and they were not. So first of all, in this book, only one sister goes missing. The oldest sister goes missing, not all three, or not the two oldest. And the two younger sisters, Vivi and Iris, are looking for their sister, Gray. So the two of them are teaming up to find their sister. And I think I said that they went from like, like brown eyes to blue eyes. They definitely go from blue eyes to black eyes, which is way scarier. <laughs> so I just wanted to correct that. There's definitely like, this really is reminding me of the year of the witching, but if it was set in like a normal society and not like a utopian, like handmade tale <laughs> society, like this is definitely, those kind of vibes, like creepy, witchy, cottage quarry vibes, where there's like blood and gore and like horror everywhere, but still being told in this very like accessible way to lots of different people. So I'm really enjoying this. It's definitely creeping me out. And I'm on chapter 10 where things are getting crazy. So I'm gonna keep reading this. I'm listening to the audiobook, which is gorgeous, by the way. I highly recommend it. The narrator has an accent a very like london-esque accent because that is where this book is set and the way she narrates the main character iris and vivi like the way they're narrated is just so beautiful and i absolutely love their voices so i'm going to keep reading this today and listening to it on audiobook while i do some housework because gosh do we still have a lot of housework to do if you couldn't tell let me shift you so you can see all of the boxes. This is what moving looks like, people. two-thirds of the way through House of Hollow. I'm on page 205. And boy, is this book weird. I'm loving it. It's very, um, it's more fantastical than I expected. I guess I knew that it was fantasy, technically, but it's categorized first as horror, which I think is absolutely true. It is creepy. But I didn't expect the fantasy elements to be so interesting to me. Like, I'm just so curious as to how this world is working. And we're finding out very slowly. It's like very slowly unraveling what is going on, where these girls went when they were kids, when they disappeared, why they are changed now. And there's just a lot of like unexplained stuff. There are some really creepy things happening with bugs and with flowers. It's really just beautiful. It's fantastic right now and I'm loving it. I'm very tempted to just keep reading this and to finish but as you can see I didn't set up my shelves and I need to do the laundry, do like regular chores in addition to setting up the house. So what I think I'm going to do is take a break, do some chores and then I'm going to get back to reading this and I'm hoping, fingers crossed, to finish this book today. You might have seen in my last clip that I went to Barnes and Noble. So my um, anniversary present from Brent was a trip to Barnes and Noble and a gift card. So I spent my gift card. I had a fantastic time walking around Barnes and Noble. It was amazing. And I spent my gift card on two books. So the first book I got was Every Heart a Doorway by Sean and McGuire. This is so small, so much smaller than I expected. 
But this is the start of a young adult fantasy series that is kind of, the blurb is what happens after Ever After. It's basically about kids who are part of fairy tales, they travel to another world, and then when they come back to the real world and are struggling to adjust to being back in the real world, um, they go to this place, I think it's called Eleanor's Home for Wayward Children. It doesn't say on the back, but that's what I think it's called. And they kind of recover there. But I've heard only fantastic things about this. So I had to pick it up. And then I grabbed The Ones We're Meant to Find by Joan He. And this, I've started this from the library and I already really enjoy the writing. So I decided it's so beautiful. I'm just going to buy it. The cover, I don't know if you can tell, is like a shimmery kind of um, like pearlescent texture. And I honestly was really sold by the end papers. Absolutely gorgeous. And then we have this beautiful rose gold um, hardcover foil design. Absolutely stunning. Absolutely gorgeous. And this book is also, interestingly enough, about sisters who are trying to find each other. So this is about K and C who are separated and it's not really explained how, but K is, C is looking for her sister K and C is stranded on an island and has been for a very long time. And she is trying to find her sister, but she has no memories of how she ended up there and what is going on. So she's really struggling with trying to escape this island. She doesn't really know where she's going. She just knows she has to find her sister. It's like a sci-fi fantasy. There's floating cities. It's, I think, like a little bit of a climate change story. Yeah, so on the back it says, in a climate ravaged future, the love between two sisters is the only hope for humanity's future. This is sci-fi at its best, floating cities, kindness, and desert islands. What else do you need? So I picked this up as my other book. So I am going to go do some chores and then maybe finish this today. Um, next time I check in with you, I'll have finished this book and wow, I'm so excited. Okay, so I finished House of Hollow by Crystal Sutherland and I think I'm gonna give this, I don't know, three and a half or four stars. So let me tell you my thoughts. I enjoyed the writing. There was nothing necessarily wrong with the writing. It was very flowery. It was very dark. And I enjoyed a lot of aspects of this book. I really loved the creepy, otherworldly vibe. The fairy tale vibe of this book does come through pretty strongly. I didn't necessarily like super connect with the horror aspects. And I don't know if that's because this was young adult and I don't read a whole lot of young adult horror and maybe I just wasn't sure what to expect, but it did feel very young adult to me. Although I was very pleased and like pleasantly surprised by a lot of things that did happen in here. And it was gory, like it was gory and gross and dark. It was definitely not something that was light or too young by any means. It's just something about this didn't really connect with me. Now, I love stories about sisters, but I do not have a sister. And I think sometimes that comes into play when I'm reading books about sister relationships, where I'm like, that just seems like a stretch. Like that just seems like too much. And there are points in this book where I was like, there's no way that if I had a sister, I would let her do this. <laughs> like, there's just no way. I, sister bonds can only go so far. But that's all I'm going to say about this. It was gross. It was creepy and dark. But it had this, like, undertone of a beautiful sister relationship and a magical writing style. I thought that the world that was created in this was very interesting, although I have a lot of unanswered questions still that I'm not sure I'll ever get the answers to. So ultimately, if you like young adult horror or darker young adult books, I think that you might really like this. I mentioned at the beginning of this book that there was kind of like a mean girl at school aspect, and that does not last super long. I would say most of this book is them traveling to find Gray, their sister who goes missing at the beginning of this story. But it is, there were just a lot of aspects that I think didn't get pulled together the way that I wanted them to. For example, one of the things in this story story that is something I thought was very interesting. Gray, the sister, the oldest sister who goes missing, sews 
hidden messages into, she's a fashion designer, and she sews hidden messages into each of her clothes that she produces. That's like her shtick. Like people love that she's so mysterious and she like sews these little pieces of paper, as you can see here, into her clothing. And it just really wasn't like elaborated upon. I was hoping that that would really come into play and it just didn't. So stuff like that, that were really cool and interesting concepts that just were not fulfilled the way I really wanted them to be. But I do recommend this book. I think it would be perfect for a lot of people. And I think a lot of people have really, really loved it. Like I said, I would give it a three and a half or four, which is by no means a bad rating. It just isn't one of my all time favorites. So I do recommend this. It was very interesting and intriguing, kind of dark, but also like a cool vibe. I don't know, like, like a chill spring, like death in spring vibe. So that brings me to the end of this vlog. It's probably a very long one. We are more settled into our house now. As you can see, my bookshelves are set up. The rooms are still being put together, but the walls are painted for the most part and we're doing some landscaping outside. So ultimately we're getting the house together and I'm just so happy to be in our new home. So I hope you enjoyed this vlog. I will real quick tell you the two other books I read in this vlog were House at the Bottom of the Lake by Josh Mallerman and this is like a novella. I gave this four stars, although thinking back, it might be more of a three and a half. And then my favorite book of the vlog, hands down, Crescent City, House of Earth and Blood by Sarah J. Mass. I will never forget about this book. I will love it till my dying day. I'm trash for Sarah J. Mass and this is my first one. So I can't wait to pick up more by this author. However, I would recommend all three of the books that I read in this vlog to anyone. Well, not to anyone, but if you're somebody who you think you might like these books, I recommend them to you. So thank you all so much for watching. Please like, comment, subscribe, share this video with anyone who you think would enjoy it, and I will see you next time. Bye, friends.